Good day. So here, I will be taking the second derivative and determining the intervals in which the function, the graph of the function is concave up and concave down. So first, let's take the first derivative and I'll need to work the quotient rule here. And so first I'll take the derivative of the top function. So I get 2x times the bottom function and subtract top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over bottom function squared. Great, so let's simplify this a little. So I'll distribute the 2x, so that'll be 2x squared minus 2x minus x squared all over x minus 1 squared. So 2x squared minus x squared is x squared minus 2x over x minus 1 squared. Y double prime is equal to, now those will be super fun, we need to take the derivative again and the derivative of the top function will be 2x minus 2, okay, times the bottom function, so x minus 1 squared, and I'll subtract the top function times the derivative of the bottom function which will be, I can bring down the exponent here, work the chain rule, and I'll get 2x minus 2, the derivative of the bottom function, all over, oh wow, that was not straight at all, eh, mediocre, but that's okay, then the bottom one, we're going to have to square this, and x minus 1 squared, squared will be x minus 1 to the 4, and I'll simplify the top, I can actually, what I'll do here is that I will see this element here, 2x minus 2, 2x minus 2, I'll factor that out. And I will get basically x minus 1 squared minus x squared minus 2x. But this I'll expand first. So x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then I'll be subtracting x squared minus 2x. So I'll get x squared plus 2x all over x minus 1 to the 4. Great, so y double prime would be 2x minus 2 over here. These can cancel out. You're multiplying it by 1. Oh, how nice. And x minus 1 to the 4. So here's what we have. 2x minus 2 over x minus 1 to the 4. We want to set the double derivative equal to 0. It will cross multiply, so we end up with just 2x minus 2. Look at that. Bring the 2 over, so I get 2x equals 2, x equals then 1. Great. But note one thing. We had 1, x equals 1, as an asymptote. Okay. So what are we going to need to do here? I have f double prime of x, and I'll plug in a 1 over here, so we're going to test and figure out concavity over here, to the left of 1, and to the right of 1. So, let me plug in 0 for x. So, f double prime of 0 will be 2 times 0 minus 2 over 0 minus 1 to the 4. So, up top here, in the numerator, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 1 to the 4 is positive 1. So, that's a negative value. So, the graph of the function is concave down in this area, to the left of the asymptote. What about f double prime of, let's use maybe 2? So that will be 2 times 2 minus 2 over 2 minus 1 to the 4. 2 times 2, 4, minus 2, 2. Then 2 minus 1, 1 to the 4, 1. So we got a positive value here. Great, so it's concave up over here. Concave up and concave down. So the function, I believe, will look something like this. Uh, I have no room to really sketch it, but I think it looks something like this. So it's concave. Let me just get a different color. It's concave down over here 
and concave up over there. Right now, I'm not really concerned with the... There's an asymptote there. Um, oh, wow. Actually, that was brutal because the asymptote is actually at 1. So sorry about that. So it's probably going to look something like this. Right now, I'm not too concerned with intercepts or anything like that. If you were to graph, actually, or to sketch the graph of the function, I'd recommend, of course, looking for the for intercepts and looking for relative maxima and minima and so on. But in this case, we're only concerned about concavity. So we know it's concave down to the left of positive 1, concave up to the right of positive 1, and that's it.